Hello there, this is going to be possibly a very quick hunt. I've got about two hours this afternoon and I've returned to, I don't know whether you can just see behind me there, that uh, is a 18th century church which was actually built on the foundations of a of a medieval church. Um, I've been in this field before, I found a couple of spindle worlds, that was with the Garrett Ace 150. I found a George the Third Halfpenny, but I've never been in with the E-Track, so this hopefully might produce something decent. As far as I know, nobody's been detecting here. It's uh, private land, so I'm going to have a dig. This is the first signal, just here. Around about there, it's reading 12.40 to 12.42, and I'm going to give it a dig and see what's in. Oh, get in there. I see silver. Whose is this one? Uh, it's a three pence, it's a, so it's a threat me bit. I'm not going to rub it too much because it hasn't got much detail on it, but uh, it looks like a late Victorian one, so it'll be late 1800s. I'll clean it up and let you have a look at the end. hunt was absolutely atrocious. I um, found one coin and it was silver which is good but um, after about two hours of walking around in the rain uh, I gave up. I'll show you that coin at the end. It's a pretty nice coin, a little bit worn. It's actually the year was 1900, Queen Victoria, threepenny bit. Um, but now I'm on my way right up into the hills I normally hunt, you know, pretty much upland pasture, but this is this is probably right up in the hills. It's uh, it's hopefully never been done before, but I'm not sure. There is people in the next village who I know have metal detectors. Whether they've been on this particular site or not, I don't know. I hope not, because it's it's a very small village uh, that I'm going to go around. It's been built on a medieval village. And, um, it's got a peel tower there that dates from, I think, the 13th, 14th century. It's in ruins now, but there's a church there. There's nice fields behind it. It's all pasture, but at one point there was about 1,200 people living in and around that area when they were really into lead mining. So with any luck, not many people will have done it with a detector, if anybody. Hopefully nobody has done it. Uh, that would be perfect. Even if people have done it, I just hope they haven't done it with machines that go anywhere near as deep as the A-Track because I'll still be able to go where they've been and pull stuff up. So this hunt hopefully will be very good. It might turn out to be crap, but stick with me. You'll see what I find. right up into the hills now and here's a place where I've always wanted to go detecting. There's two very strange hills there. Almost looks like, well, it just looks like a set of arse cheeks sticking out the top of the hill. Really strange. They look to be approximately a hundred yards across and they really stand out. Um, there's an abbey here which was originally founded in the 1100s and the surrounding land has got to have some relics. Got to have some relics. I'm hunting approximately a mile and a half away from this village. So there's got to be something there. Got to be. Here's some more flats next to the river. There's actually a show on there every year. And that's happened since the year dot. That'd be an awesome one to do, but that's not where I'm going, unfortunately. Nobody can go on there. Um, now, when I'm on my way up here, I will say that the village where I'm going to be detecting around, not everybody used to be clustered in a tight community. The community would be very scattered when the mining was on. 
there'd be loads of little small holdings on the hills, all up the valleys, and people really would be scattered all over the place, and all those dwellings would be linked by footpaths. So there'd be people, horses, all sorts of things going backwards and forwards all day, possibly all night as well. So finds really could be anywhere. So I don't know where to start. Why is it as soon as I start filming it gets up windy or it rains? Unbelievable. But uh, here's the first decent signal that I've had. I've dug a button so far. I've been out about three quarters of an hour. And we've got a good signal down here. And hopefully it's a coin. It is a coin. Looks like a big Georgian penny. Uh, it's actually a cartwheel penny. You see the ridge around the outside. So that most likely be 1797, certainly late 1700s. I don't think there's any detail left on it, but that's a good start. Very next dig yields a musket ball. No more than Man, inch and a half under the surface. Nice big musket ball as well, which is encouraging because that's, that's an early one. Another good find. There's a buckle there. Unfortunately, I've hit it with a spade. It was on its end. It was giving a real freaky signal and I made a bit of a balls of pinpoint in that one. Even with the 11 inch coil. Um, but still, it's a find. Made a couple of finds down by the stream, just on the other side of the wall. Um, with that wood behind me, that's pretty much where the village is, so I'm heading over there. There is a few footpaths across these fields, so I'm going to stick the big coil on, and I'm going to try to get a little bit deeper. There's quite a few signals that I've picked up, are just little bumps and little suggestions that there might be something there. Hopefully this big fella will be able to find them a bit better than the standard coil. Now this is a DTEC 18x15 SEF coil. Very heavy, hence the harness and bungee that I'm going to have to support it, but um, it does get a lot deeper than the standard 11 inch coil, so hopefully I'll be able to drag some things up from way down in the ground. I was beginning to give up hope, found a couple of Victorian pennies, uh, but the wind has been terrible so I'll probably just edit those out. Um, just dug down approximately 9-10 inches, and here on end is, what is it, one shilling, probably is Victorian. Yep, a Victorian shilling. Not in bad condition. Quite an old one as well. It's 1845. It's a nice find. That's good. 9 or 10 inches, and it looks like it's a very small coin. It is. Hmm. Not sure what that one is. Can just about make out the outline of a bust on it. Now, this was reading 1238. Uh, quite a choppy signal, but it uh, wasn't too bad. That's a hell of a depth for a small coin, which I think I may have clipped with a spade. Oh dear. And it's a, it's a milled silver coin. Uh, it's a Victorian sixpence. Very black. I mean, you can see how deep that is. That's a hell of a depth. It was lying flat, but uh, it did give a great signal. That big coil really has made a difference. Here's another decent signal, reading 12.34. 
that, but thought it was a coin for a minute. I'm actually just out the back of the church, and this is where I've been finding all the Victorian coins. I found maybe it's a dozen now or so. That's the first button though. This was about six inches deep, and uh, it was reading 1244 or 45. Um, looks like a coin ball, so I'm hoping it is a, indeed a coin. It is a coin. By God, it looks like an old one. It's a uh, George III. George III half penny. Looks like we've got another coin ball here. Yep. Big old penny from, oh, I don't know, nine, ten inches again. That one's a George V. Uh, what year is it? Let's have a look. Nineteen eleven. Not bad, Nick. That actually. Mm, that looks like another half penny. Yeah, it looks like another George the Third half penny. Find a few of them now. They're pretty much knackered, like. I'm not be able to get a date or pretty much get nothing off it. No detail. I mean, the, that coin there was sitting on the clay. It was flat, but it was sitting on the clay way down in the soil. See how far my arm is in. Pretty much up to the elbow. There's a good depth. Day's getting on now, and I'm finding these George III coins in this bottom corner of the field it's it's on the top side of the village the village is just over there uh, got another signal here i found two or three half pennies in amongst here this one isn't as deep i just hope it's another coin Yep, it's another coin. Looks like another half penny. And which way is he facing? Oh, it's about knackered. I would say it's another George the Third. I'm saying it wasn't as deep. It's still a kind of depth. Yeah, it's still maybe eight inches or so. I'm miles away from any houses, but I've got a good signal here. Reading 12.45 and at about 9 inches again. Ah, I thought it was a coin, but it isn't. I thought that was a coin, but it, I don't think it is. This is what I thought was a coin with the five dints in it and I don't know whether you can make out but there is that's probably not too bad when the light's reflecting on it but that's uh, Britannia on the back so it is indeed a penny and it's most likely being hit with a shotgun which has caused those dints <laughs> first one I've had like that so I'm back home now and this is the sum total of almost eight hours metal detecting uh, it was pretty hard going and most of these finds were made pretty much within about 150 yards of each other so there was a real hot spot and the rest of the land was pretty devoid of anything got a small collection of Georgian coppers here not sure what that one is I'm just lumping it with the Georgian but there's half pennies and pennies and there's also a really knackered um, cartwheel penny can't see any detail on that then we've got a few Victorian um, George V and also Edward VII coins again pennies and half pennies 
in fairly bad condition and they include this one which has been hit with a shotgun at fairly close range by the looks of it because that's penetrated quite a long way into the copper that's a hard coin um, on the face of it it's not that interesting but it was in the middle of a field which makes me think it was either chucked up in the air and then shot or it was possibly in somebody's pocket when they got shot which would be an awesome thing but anyway it's the first one I've had like that got a few buttons there's actually almost as many buttons as coins a lion ring there and a belt buckle not a particularly interesting one I'm not entirely sure what this is but it has been gilded at some point doesn't look particularly old then there's a few modern coins total and five pence and big old musket ball lovely and round that one and there's three silver coins and bear in mind I got this one from the previous hunt that's the one I dug up in the field near the church so it's an old head Victorian threepenny bit and the year on that is 1900 and these two I got from my hunt way up in the hills and and that one's a sixpence which is 1866 in very worn condition and that one is a shilling which is 1845 the condition of that one's a little bit better but it's still very worn this one if you remember was on its end so all I had to detect was something as wide as that so to pull that one up was a an achievement and also because of the depth to pull this one up was a bit of an achievement as well so all in all not a fantastic hunt but it was interesting I found a hot spot so there may be more stuff there and the good thing is there's quite a lot of Georgian coins in a small concentration so there may well be some silver amongst that which would be really nice to find because most of these coins were hellish deep I do feel that if I didn't have the e-track which gets good depth by itself and also I didn't have the big coil I probably would have missed at least half of this stuff so I think it did make a real difference thanks for watching